So before the year 2023 wraps up officially, I just want to talk about the Game Awards of this year and perhaps the negative reception surrounding it and um, maybe kind of delve into a few things as to why people felt a bit uncomfortable, just were bored of it, or perhaps just uh, uh, didn't feel really good. And that's pretty much it. I just want to preface this video by saying no I'm not like, I'm not really attacking any particular individual or any part of the operation uh, behind the game awards because it, well first it's logistically impressive and second uh, I think this is more about exploring avenues or perhaps like ways to make the game awards feel like the game awards um, and this is important to talk about even now even more so now especially within the context of E3 basically finally officially calling it. And um, of course, you know, since perhaps right before COVID or perhaps right after COVID and because of COVID in some cases, um, there were multiple developer studios or publishers coming out with their own platforms from which they speak from. But I feel like nowadays it's essentially coalesced around the Summer Game Fest and the Game Awards. Um, and of course, uh, a couple other uh, showcases or developer directs, which are awesome. Um, and the Game Awards... In its name, to me, it, it kind of signifies that this is an event, not just to like award, whether it's based on the judge votes or the public votes, um, the games, but also the makers of those games. Um, and for a lot of people, especially this year, it didn't feel like that. Uh, I guess in you know more so, I feel feel like this this year, if you compare it to last year, felt very very commercialized um and you know that's kind of inevitable because you need the publishers to be on board you also need the sponsors uh or just the companies that can help you do this event um and what's essentially the world premieres is essentially commercials for upcoming games or uh games that are being planned and i think that's great and i think a lot of people do watch the game awards for this part because it's news and maybe we'll get them excited for the next year for gaming um but then there's also some other segments where it's like it, feel, it feels really forced uh like i think the most natural thing that happened in terms of like host commentary was uh <laughs> christopher judge going up on stage and kind of poking a little fun at call uh, at call of duty modern warfare 3's campaign I felt like that felt really natural, didn't feel corporate, didn't feel forced. And there were also a, a, like Hollywood-like segments, I feel, where in not unnecessarily, because they're also trying to like drive up the hype, but also and also in some cases, some of those actors are involved in the actual game they're promoting. But it just doesn't really feel like you need a Muppet segment. Um and a couple of celebrities or even celebrity uh, game developers such as Hideo Kojima come up and talk a lot longer than the people who are receiving the awards. Um, and of course, there's like two reasons as to why that fell off this year, because sort of as I think as a overreaction or over adjustment rather and over adjustment on the fly um, in reaction to last year when Christopher Judge had like a six minute speech um they kind of probably overdid it a bit here by telling people who are winning these major awards even game of the year or uh, just entirely skipping over a lot of rewards um just because they're on a tight schedule and they need to fit all this all these commercials and everything in um it just feels like the focus of the game awards is not no longer on Again, giving awards to the game developers and making it all about them because they're the stars, really, to have made these awesome mediums through which we um, enjoy life. But when you see things like this, it's like, so you're giving uh, like Hollywood more time. And it's kind of weird to think of like the game industry following Hollywood along when probably the gaming industry is just as big or if not bigger than Hollywood at this point in time. It just feels like in order to legitimize itself, the event wants to bring on Hollywood celebrities to talk up longer than game developers. Um, I don't know if it's because of stardom. I don't know if it's because, again, it, it'll get people outside of the usual scope of, I guess, what they view as a gaming demographic 
uh, in in for these events. But again, it just doesn't feel that great. And uh, there's it, and Josh Josh Sawyer on Twitter also uh, remarked that it's an embarrassing indictment of a segment of the industry desperate for validation via star power with little respect for the dev. It's supposedly honoring. And that's basically what I'm saying here. Like, why do we, or why do, what does gaming need uh, to have these weird segments instead of actually doing what the name suggests? It feels like, again, given the context of E3 going away, it feels like now the Game Awards is trying to be both E3 and both this is like this is for the community. This is for the developers. It, it, it feels a little weird. I don't know if it's a transitional phase, but yeah, I, I would say that's one of the biggest factors. You know, Hollywood over the development industry, and then of course the developers being eclipsed, and of course the commercials being. I mean, the world premieres being commercials, um, and I think there's also a fourth factor, especially for a lot of people who keep a close eye on what's going on in the gaming industry, right? So in 2021, when the whole Blizzard uh, thing was going on, and uh, the Game Awards kind of alluded to the headlines, the uh, the incredibly disturbing news coming out in regards to Activision Blizzard's uh, workplace and such. So that was a thing, but also at the same time, it was not really a direct thing. It just felt a little... Uh, too vague in terms of like addressing it and uh, addressing the elephant in the room and i get that as well on a sort of the business side but at the same time it, this conflicts with what i feel like should be uh the game awards because in a year where you're approaching ten thousand or more layoffs at this point um studios being bought up and you know teams being entire teams being disintegrated entire uh companies or studios being disintegrated people are getting laid off before christmas and you don't talk about it it's just uh it's just really weird like how do you celebrate the products of people who are literally just suffering right so i think ben star um actor for of course final fantasy 16 i think put it the best would you say 2023 is the best year for video games? Honestly, are we going to get serious? I think, um, yes. It is an amazing year for video games to come out. I think it's not a great year for video games insofar as all of the layoffs. I think it's not great for that, and I think it, that does need to be spoken about at an event like this. I think we want to celebrate all of these games, but maybe there is something missing uh, because a lot of people who made those games are no longer working at those companies. And I think that also has to be respected. So yeah, 2023 is an astonishing year for the video games that have been made, but not necessarily for the industry that it reflects. Um, and so I think that's a shame. Uh, and hopefully this is the worst that it gets. I fear that it isn't, um, but I really hope that you know we, the industry figures out a way of course correcting and allowing those people who've made these games that we are celebrating today to celebrate them as well and not be on you know the unemployment line so yeah again i think those are the several factors or more that i think contributed to the the game awards uh of 2023 kind of feel off or weird um and it's just i guess you know it's complicated obviously to organize something like this I wonder if there are any avenues that they want to explore in the future, maybe change up the format of how the Game Awards go, instead of trying to cram in as many commercials between each award segment or some sort of um, I guess other segments, if they want to really keep those segments that I feel like are, are a little relevant sometimes, um, like, the, like the Muppet. Uh, I think they could just maybe look at that, because instead of just cutting off you know speeches or forcing people to do a 30 second uh round speech it's a, you know what i mean it's just especially during something like this wrap it up where he was dedicating to the dev team member who had passed away uh maybe they could explore that maybe increase the amount of time or even just do half and half if you, if you want to keep it clean, like the first half is the actual awards and you give them as much time as you can or would. And um, the, the second half be the commercials or the world premieres. 
and people will still stick around i feel like for those because that's news right and it's still also nice to give time to the actual people who should be celebrated at this event and you know i'm i'm kind of hopeful and somewhat confident that some some things like that will happen i mean it's clear that they do learn um in various aspects for uh the next the game awards from the last or previous years so i guess we'll see but yeah looking forward to what you guys think let me know in the comments below